One of the hardest parts of any clock build is putting all the pieces together to produce a ticking clock. The short film will help take the frustration out of your own personal search for the elusive tick. First and foremost, make sure all contacting harbour surfaces are highly polished and the ends beveled and smooth. In the assembled clock, make sure the arbors can move smoothly in their holes without any stickiness whatsoever. If this is not the case, check both arbor holes for clamping. Ideally you should be able to push the arbor against the whole wall leaving a small gap on the opposite side. Clamping will occur when the arbor hole is not in true with the arbor. To correct this, widen the hole towards the side that clamped. Using the arbor hole drill, turn and apply a slight pressure onto the wall side that clamped. This will make the hole slightly conical giving the arbor enough room to move freely. I personally use a violin maker's conical reamer, which allows me to take small shavings from the whole walls. Unfortunately, they are not exactly cheap. When all the arbors turn and move with non notable friction, test the meshing of the cogs and pinions. Assemble the arbors pairwise in the frame. Give the cog a flick. It should slow down gradually and be relatively noiseless. If it stops with a jerk, it is almost certainly a miscut tooth. Mark the offender and sand accordingly. It could also be inaccuracies in the arbor hole distances. If this is the case, fill the hole with epoxy resin and drill anew. Leaving out the anchor, fully assemble the clock. To make life a bit easier, clamp your clock to a post or something similar, so that when you have to disassemble the clock, you do not have to unscrew it first. To simulate the pull of the driving weight, tie the same amount to the front of the frame. With the Primus, this would be 3 kilos or 6.5 pounds. The reason for this is that the drive weight will very slightly pull the front of the frame down and if the arbor hole clearances are too small it could cause clamping. Blow across the escapement wheel. It should run smoothly and come to a gentle stop. The clock must first pass this test before you move on. Next hang the pendulum and give it a small swing. It took about 10 minutes for this pendulum to stop swinging. If this is not the case check that the hook only contacts the groove valley and not the walls. Now assemble the crutch and check for any pendulum rod pinching at swing extremes. If it does pinch, just sand the rod thinner. Now tie on the driving weight. I use plastic bottles which I can fill or empty according to the weight needed. The weight here is 2 kilos or 4.5 pounds, which as you can see is just enough to drive the clock. The less weight you need, the better. The anchor should swing symmetrically so that both pallets have an equal travel. As you can see here, the right side travels further than the left. To correct this, hold the pendulum tight and push down the left side of the anchor. Keep tweaking until you have a symmetrical travel. Normally, your clock should run without any lubrication whatsoever. But, if despite your best efforts, the clock refuses to run smoothly, or your driveway is excessive, you can lubricate with candle wax as shown. Wax has the advantage of not drying out or being soaked into the wood. With a piece of arbor, press the wax into the arbor hole walls. If you follow all these steps, the end result will be an accurate and reliable clock, which should give you many years of satisfaction.